Hello again. Oh, awesome. That's all you got so far? <laughs> you're, about, you're about to be able to get another one going on. I got it. Thanks. I don't think you should have Yeah. 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 I didn't know. That's why I wanted to make sure. Stuff out, she's out there. Sick and 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 sick uh, Mayor Carr. Here. Um, Assistant Police Chief Mike Lanning. Here. Fire Chief Johnny Tremaine. Here. EMS Director Bobby Mills. Here. Utility Director Olin Clausen. Attorney Leslie Votaw. Here. And myself. Any announcements? Hearing that approved mess previous meeting. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Who did the motion? Morning. Okay. All opposed? Sorry. Okay. <coughs> Any reports? Uh, Fire Department Chief John Tremaine. 
Uh, the only thing I have, everybody should have a copy of the runs for February. We have 52 calls. That's all I got. Police Department. No report, Mayor. EMS Director Bob Green. No Lewis. report, Mayor. Okay. Don't the department? No report, Mayor. No report? Okay. Uh, new business, Jenny Felix, drug free workplace policy, full positions, and character council. Good evening. As you can see, I have uh, three items to speak with you about tonight on, on the agenda. Um, the first is the um, drug free workplace policy. In your packets, you'll see what is our current drug free, wor free workplace policy and the um, proposed drug free workplace policy. Um, I'm presenting this on, on behalf of the drug free workplace committee, which has been, um, has met several times this year um, to create this policy. Um, as well as I've been working with ITI, which is our drug testing vendor, to make sure that we're in compliance with any kind of federal <coughs> regulations in relation to DOT for our CDL drivers. Um, and we've, I've been meeting with the union as well. So I'd like to request um, your approval tonight to start implementing the changes in the policy. Anything the board? Just um, in this packet, that, um, the current policy that it goes from number three to number six. There's no number. Oh, four. You're, yeah, there is a page missing in there. I apologize for that. <laughs> you must be missing a page. Yeah. You said the union signed off on this too. Yes, and I believe there's a union representative here. Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, Take your name. Uh, Garrett Cavanaugh, Chief Union Stewart. Yeah, we uh, we worked with the uh, city and uh, the board that you guys appointed to, to do this. Uh, everything worked out pretty good. Worked went over it. it uh, we find it pretty pretty well. Like Thank it. you. Thanks. You more from board? Mm -hmm. yeah. Entertain a motion. I'm so moved to approve. Second. Aye. All favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> um, the next item that I have on here is regarding um, this summer's help at the pool. This is just for pool positions. Um, I'd like to propose that we do this similar to how we did the hiring last year by my making the recommendation to hire Tony Abbott for pool manager and D. Abbott for assistant manager. Anything on the board? Entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Second? I move. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. That. Okay, thank you. The, my sec the second piece to the pool help is um, I'd like to ask the, uh, the board's approval for Tony and D. and myself <coughs> to hire from the applications that are in your packet. Um, 16 lifeguards, one pool janitor, four concessions, two cashiers, and two pool monitors from those applications. Anything board? The, the, the few, it looks like there were a few added yeah, those were added. Um, the deadline was 4.30 on Friday, and the packets went out at 2. So there was a handful that came in within that two-and-a-half-hour period. Are you going to come back with the their people they're choosing? For these? Um, I was planning on doing it how we did last year, which I believe we sent out um, an, an, a, me a memo, maybe, with the names of the, the folks that were, were approved or that, that we decided to hire. These are the same numbers of employees as last year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. These are exactly the same amount of numbers. I would so move to accept. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Aye. Okay. Okay. The third piece that I have um, 
is something that I've been I'm going to introduce Mary Russell here she's with the Cincinnati Character Council I'm going to ask her to do most of the speaking on this piece um, this is something that I'm very excited about I've been working with Mary um, coming up with a, a plan for um, 2015 for um, uh, an to be an employer of character um, and Mary's going to talk with you a little bit about what she's got proposed for us Thank you, Jenny, and good e evening, everyone. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of the Character Council of Greater Cincinnati, and we've been working together on creating this plan to be a, for Lawrenceburg to be a city of character. Um, we're a nonprofit organization based in Cincinnati. I actually have a home office in Cleves and grew up in Dover, so this area is familiar. Um, we have a, um, an initiative going on here in Southeast Indiana. We have a steering committee that is working on a region regional character coalition and the idea is to recruit businesses faith organizations government organizations and schools to all promote good character uh, we have 49 positive character qualities that we promote anything from alertness to sensitivity to wisdom and maybe as you drive down highway 50 you've seen the signs that are now being posted uh, on your your large signs with the character quality of the month. So that's what we do is we promote one positive character quality every month. Um, this month it's persuasiveness. And so the idea and the proposal before you is to do some training for the City of Lawrenceburg employees. Um, we have a half-day seminar called Success Through Integrity. And what we do is we uh, help employees to be more aware of their own character. Our behavior stems from our character. And so as we grow and improve our character, our behavior also improves. And so um, the objectives are to create a positive positive uh, and even more positive environment and culture within the city um, actual administration um, to help employees be the best that they can be and to really work through the employees to reach many more citizens of southeast Indiana. Um, we've had wonderful success working with other organizations, both businesses, some government organizations, and schools throughout the tri-state, and uh, would really, you know, are really looking forward to a partnership with, with the city. So our plan is to do three half-day sessions of this seminar. We provide free monthly email reminders about the character qualities. Um, we would work with Jenny to form an internal character committee within, um, within the city. And then in the fall, early fall, we would do another round of training, one-hour energizers on a topic that we'll select later. Um, and so the total budget is $4,150, and um, uh, that's pretty much what I have to, uh, to present to you. Can I answer any questions? What are the R's you're looking at doing this? Uh, you mean the working hours, weekends, what? Uh, working hours is what we're planning. Um, it's the half-day session is, uh, we, we like to do those in a morning, like from 8.30 until 12.30 or so. Um. And we would, we would do three sessions so that all of the employees could participate, you know, at different times. They would have different opportunities to be there for the training. Well, our workforce is uh, pretty well down. I mean, hmm. we've we've what had about eight people retiring. We haven't replaced them, and we got about four more. I don't know if you you know. Will they be staggered? So I mean, obviously. Yes, they would certainly be staggered. Mm hmm. Any more from board? I like you know. There's obviously with. Uh, employees you know there's always issues uh, that seem to arise and seem to affect some not all um, 
but also it says, uh, you know, heighten the image of, uh, you know, the city as a whole, not just employees. Uh, you know, it involves the administration too. So, uh, start here. Um, as ethical, efficient, and inclusive, as an inclusive organization, uh, that uh, speaks to me. Yeah. yeah, and I'm excited about the program because I feel like it um, would start from the inside out. You know, if we get the employees energized, we get the employees um, to boost their morale, it'll then, you know, affect their work, which will then in turn um, turn over to the community. So I think it's an, it's an all-around good, great program. I'm very excited about um, implementing the, this year. Um, I wanted to, the, the what I wanted to ask the board for approval was, um, there is an agreement in there. Um, I'd like approval for myself to sign the agreement with Mary and um, go ahead and, and get it going because we're ready to go with it. Any board? Any monies? Um, the four thousand one hundred fifty dollars. Yes, I have. I have it budgeted. You have it budgeted. Okay. So what line is that coming out of? Um, the training budget. The training line. Entertain a motion. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brad Massey, new more purchase. Brad Massey, Civil City Foreman. Uh, I've come to ask to uh, purchase a new mower for this uh, upcoming <coughs> mowing season. I've got three quotes here from Zimmer Tractor. Uh, they range from seventy-one ninety-nine to uh, eight thousand seventy-nine dollars. Uh, the two quotes that I asked for. They're both the same price, seventy-five nineteen. Uh, I was looking for your guys' pleasure of the purchase, so it's up to you guys. Can you read those companies and uh, prices off to me? Uh, the one is Zimmer Tractor and Aurora for seventy-five nineteen, and Zimmer Tractor Larchburg, Indiana, seventy-five nineteen. Hmm. What kind of motor is this, my? This the seventy-five nineteen is a fifty-two inch laser with a uh, fifty-inch deck. With a Kohler motor. Then the other ones are a, set, a 52 inch deck with a Kawasaki, uh, $71.99 if available. Or you've got the higher price one, which is a Kohler motor, $9,439. This is budgeted money? Yes. And Brad, your recommendation? To go with the uh, 7519 with the Kohler motor from uh, Larchburg Zimmer. We have X marks? Yes. Right. We've got probably five of them now. Board's pleasure. Make it. Go ahead, Mario. I'm going to say if it's needed, I'd so move. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Brad. Mario Todd, Dactronic <laughs> Service Agreement. Thank you, Your Honor. In your packet, you'll see a maintenance agreement that extends the parts and maintenance on our electronic sign out in US 50. I think we've been engaged for the last five years, six years on this agreement. This <laughs> renewal. Anything to board? Entertain a motion. Mar Mario, does this cover both of them? No, just the one at the uh, Church. third street. Hmm. At what street? Third. Oh, out third. here at the okay. Oh, right here at third street. <laughs> sure. Yes, it's that short little one. Yeah. <clears throat> Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Mario Larry's Lock and Safe Security. Thank you again, Your Honor. At the Ivy Tech building, we have an <coughs> exit door that is on the west side of the building that allows the parking garage to access the hotel. 
Right now it's not an ADA compliant door. As you see, there's three options on here. I'd recommend option one and option three to allow us to be in compliant. Anything to the board? Did you review this, um, Mr. <coughs> Fryman? I'm auto, sorry. Auto openers. We had complaints or we just trying to get in compliant. Get uh, actually, the Ivy Tech staff have already installed some of the ADA <coughs> requirements. These panic bars? Uh, it's not the panic bar. It would actually be the opener itself <coughs> and installing a light, a window. Leslie, um, <coughs> do we have a contract with them or do we need three quotes? Um, this would be the same group that has all our auto openers that put on for the last year. I mean, that would be up to you, Aaron, if you wanted to have I, I didn't it. know if it was required or not. Um, with it being the amount. the amount, I don't believe so. But, I mean, that's totally up to the board if you want to. If there's anything else out there. If they, I mean, I don't know as far as um, sole. <coughs> Mario, I means what's your opinion as far as sole source? Well, it would interface with the other systems we have be that were just installed last system, year. Right? Would it be a compatible system with it? The total is $3,232 for those two options. Go ahead, Mike. Um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, when we, we took quotes and went through this whole process when it was awarded to Larry's lock. Speak up, please. Um, I believe that it was done and then we had several areas that we were going to work on. ADA was one of them, and they were just going to submit quotes for your approval every time we moved down the list. And Mario, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's I correct. believe that's last, how we... Early part of last year, um, actually, I believe it was in 13, we started the end of the year community center, this building, and some of the other city buildings. So the quotes were done Correct. originally. This Correct. is just a, I don't know. Okay, there are. Yep. Okay, and turn in motion. I'm oh, sorry, what did you say the total was? Uh, the two options that I recommend would be $3,232. And that would come out <coughs> of 340 line item. What's that, Mario? It would be our maintenance. Okay. A motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. That's all I had, Your Honor. Okay. Whole business. Mike Clark, 2015 Geotech Service Quote. <coughs> okay, Jackie, I believe you have those with you. You'd like to open them? Just a second. Somewhere. Need some help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Need some help? No, I'm fine. Thank okay. You. I have one geotech bid is all I have, <coughs> and it's from <coughs> Cardno. I think it's Cardno. Yeah, Cardno ATC. Um. Hmm. Got a knife? Not one. It's coming up. One more. What? Nope. <laughs> I hate these envelopes. Uh. Okay, pull it open, please. <laughs> you ship anything in the world, that thing. I know. Thank you. Well. Um, was it a bid or a quote, Mike? <coughs> uh, this is a bid. Bid, okay. Yes. Um, and Jackie, there should be a 
bid form with price sheets attached? I've got a price sheet or a couple okay. of them. Yeah, there, there are multiple sheets. I need to find the bid. <coughs> I need to find the bid one. Can you read all of them? Uh, that's up to you guys. If you would like to, you can. Or Come here, please. Michael. <coughs> I don't see what I'm looking for, but maybe it's because I... Oh, what's this? No. The first couple of pages okay, are... Okay, yeah, this is the actual bid form, the first sheet. Okay, is it, yeah, the price? No. No, because there okay. are... It's for every service provided, mm -hmm. which is okay. all these other yeah. sheets. Interest. So we don't know exactly what the bid is. Total so bid. I think uh, they're in the No, audience. this is just to okay. provide services. It's a master He's service in the agreement. You want her okay. to show you? This is all. Is it in there? Yeah, they've got the verified. So you know okay. what they're looking they've got, they've got everything. So I don't required. need to read anything? No, really, it's not a lump sum. It's it's a it's master service agreement okay. for any and all geotechnical services and environmental services. Okay. Oh man. So do we need a motion to take under advisement and um, see if you have time to check it? Jackie, I want you should probably read, read them. It. You think you should. If you'd like me to, I can. Uh, personnel, the principal engineer is $115 an hour. Senior registered engineer is $85 an hour. Project manager is $70 an hour. Staff engineer is $50 an hour. Engineering aid or aids is $45 an hour. <coughs> um, standard mobilization of the drill rig, crew, one-time charge project is $350 each. ATV mounted drill rig, additional charge. $185 a day. Hollow stem auger borings, 0 to 50 <coughs> feet depth is 7. <coughs> What's LF? Linear feet? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hollow stem auger borings, 50 to 100 feet deep, is 8.75 linear foot or linear feet, whatever. Split spoon samplings, SPT tests, 0 to 50 feet depth. 12.5 linear feet. Split spoon samplings, SPT test, 50 to 100 feet, feet depth, um, 14 linear feet. Advanced borings through concrete per inch, 15 IN, whatever that is. Rock core setup per hole <coughs> is 95 each. Rock coring NX size is 27.5 linear feet. <coughs> Obtaining hauling water is $40 an hour. Shelby tube samples, $60 each, or 60 each. Piston tube samples is 100 <coughs> each. Observation well is 8 linear feet. Boring layout, $60 an hour. Standby time is zero hour, zero for hour. Test boring backfill in paved pedestrian areas with drill spoils, 20 each. Ba pavement boring restoration, concrete plug, 40 each. Pavement boring restoration, square cut and patch, 200 each. Clear site for underground utilities, obtain clearance of permits is 50 an hour. Drill department technical for Field duties, 35 an hour. Tractor or bulldozer assistance as may be required due to rough terrain or soft <coughs> ground conditions or other special equipment materials needed, 12.5%. Um, extrude and log shall be tube samples, 17 each. Moisture content, six each. Natural density, 10 each. Sieve analysis washed is 44 each. 
sieve and hydrometer is 55 each. Unconfined compression ASTM2-2435 undisturbed is 65 each. RIMAC compression test is 6.5 each. Penetrometer test, 3 each. Atterberg limits, 52.5 each. Construction materials testing and inspection, SVS. Personnel, level 1 materials technician, 30 an hour. Level 1 materials technician, OT, 45 an hour. Level 2 materials technician, 35 an hour. Level 2 materials technician, OT, 52.5 an hour. Steel technician, 1, 65 an hour. Steel tech technical, 1, OT, 97.5 hour, an hour. Senior roof consultant, 75 an hour. Principal engineer, 115 an hour. Um, let's see, where am I here? Senior registered engineer, 85 an hour. Senior technician, roof inspection, 45 an hour. Project manager, 70 an hour. Project engineer, 65 an hour. Associated testing services and equipment. Torque wrench rental, no charge per day. Windsor probe, 65 a day. Probe shots, 12.5 each. Nuclear gauge, no charge per hour. Moisture content, 6 each. Sieve analysis, 47.25 each. Um, Atterberg limits, 52.5 each. Standard Proctor, 115 each. Modified Proctor, <coughs> 115 each. Extraction Graduation, 90 each. Concrete Comp Test Cylinder, 11 <coughs> each. Comp Storage of Grout motor cu Mortar Cubes, excuse me, 11 each. Beams Flexible Strength, 25 each. Concrete Core Comprehensive Strength Test, 27 each. Use of asphalt equipment, no charge. Asphalt cores, one to four, no charge. Asphalt cores, <coughs> excuse me, five to seven, no charge. Asphalt cores over seven, no charge. Industrial hygiene, building science services. Uh, principal industrial hygienist, 115 an hour. Senior registered certified industrial hygienist, 90 an hour. Project manager, 70 an hour. Staff hygienist, 60 an hour. Field hygienist is 55 an hour. Industrial hygiene specialist is 50 an hour. Associated testing services and equipment. Asbestos bulk samples, PLM, is 10 each. Point count bulk samples is 45 each. Asbestos air samples, PCM, <coughs> Analyzed in the lab, 10 each. Asbestos air samples, PCM, analyzed in the field, 15 each. Asbestos TEM air samples, 90 each. Visible air samples for mold, indoor air pollutants, 20 each. Non-viable air samples, and that's not visible, it was viable air samples. Non-viable air samples, Mold indoor air pollutants, 75 each. Swab samples, mold indoor air pollutants, 55 each. Environmental Consulting and Engineering Services. Personnel, Principal Engineer, Geologist, 115 an hour. Senior Registered Certified Engineer, Geologist, 95 an hour. Senior Project Manager, 85 an hour. Uh, project Manager, 75 an hour. Project scientist, geologist, engineer, 70 an hour. Staff scientist, geologist, excuse me, engineer, 65 an hour. Field scientist, geologist, engineer, 50 an hour. Associated <coughs> testing services and equipment. Two inch diameter disposable baler, 10 each. Four inch diameter disposable baler, 20 each. 55 gallon drum, 45 each. Absorbent PA 
I think it should be pads, but that's not what they spelled. No charge. Um, air velocity meter, no charge. Carbon dioxide meter, no charge. Dissolved oxygen meter, 35 a day. Um, wait a minute. Disposable sampling equipment, 50 a day. Distilled water is no charge. Environmental drilling services, <coughs> no charge per gallon. Environmental drilling services, 12.5%. Explosimeter, O2 <coughs> detector, no charge. Filter inline, 25 each. Interface probe, 60 a day. Whatever that word is, poho. Pohotion, some <coughs> kind of detector, can't <laughs> pronounce it, 75 a day, here, you want to try? Leave that alone. Okay. It's spelled, wait a minute, P-O-H-O-T-I-O-N-I-A-T-I-O-N detector. I can know what that is? <laughs> oh, I do not. Okay, cool. We don't need it then. If you don't know what it is, you don't need it. I agree. Sample jars, no charge. Surveying equipment, 45 a day. Water level indicator, no charge. Support services and other associated costs. Clerical, no charge. CADD draftsman, 45 an hour. Litigation expert witness, 150 to 175 an hour. Express mail, there's nothing there. Shipping, there's nothing there. <coughs> Color copies, no charge. Minimum hour charge per trip, no charge. Mileage rate, <coughs> zero per mile. And that's the end of that, thank God. <laughs> Read it one more time. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Tommy, I'll be back there in just a minute. All right. Mike, I know we got a need for those services, but a lot of this stuff we need to explain to the people we'll never use. And, uh, exactly, and, and this is this is the pricing we've been <laughs> using here the the last couple of years. Um, it's based off of the Cincinnati <coughs> bid. Um, for the most part, I doubt if we'll use twenty percent of the items, but for the for the services that can be covered, we list them all so we have a price. So if we do have something that comes up, it does not have to be negotiated down the road. It is covered. Um, it's covered, but you're going to come back to us with an estimate of... Donnie, we, this is something we use from day to day, depending on what, what oh, no, comes up. If, <coughs> if we need, if we need a everything. provided service, uh, we have a master service agreement to go ahead and utilize that and get it done. Um, it, there is no known quantity. Um, this is how we've done it probably the last, what, five to seven years anyway. Uh, and there again, if we need it, we have the service available. If we don't need it, we don't do it. And this is as needed, correct? Exactly. Mm. Which means projects. If there's a project going on, not all the time, but... Yeah, one one of the one of the next things is you're aware that the gas company has Dowdy Road and Bilby Road opened up and plated. Uh, we require they have to post a bond and do all the work appropriately, but we um, do our own testing to make sure that they put everything back in place the way it's supposed to be. Specs are great, but unless you test them and verify them, they don't mean <coughs> anything. And you know that's one of the one of the main <coughs> items we use when you know when you guys are out there doing a utility project, Bill. Bill, we'll have them come through and do compaction density tests to make sure that our street subgrades are put back appropriately. Um, any asbestos removal or testing that we do, we have units in there to cover it. Um, you know, it, it's a professional service. Um, 
that we go ahead and bid out uh, Indiana statute, I believe, doesn't even require that since it is a professional service. But we like to do this so we at least have known unit cost amounts before we ever get into anything. Okay, any more from the board? <coughs> What's the board's pleasure? We're just going to take these under advice. I, there again, when I went up there, I seen they had all the required forms. Since <coughs> I don't have to compare one to another, I would actually ask that um, you know you guys consider awarding this and granting me the the authorization to go ahead and execute and grant notice to proceed. I think the board would like to know if there is a project going on and what you're getting into well, you Don, Donnie those happen day to day no we can't, I know, we can't wait two this weeks is really between. open Whew. I mean I, I don't know how to do it <coughs> these are not to exceed numbers also I mean, pretty well locks them in for the duration of the agreement hmm. this something you've been doing for years isn't it yes right. yeah. <coughs> it's one of those evils you have to do Entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Mike, 2015 Landscape Maintenance Award. Okay, I believe everyone has in their packet a evaluation sheet on all the bids received. It's got the highlighted yellow. Um, we had four different contractors submit bids all four of the contractors are pre-qualified with the city of Lawrenceburg and what I did was put everything down I highlighted the lowest cost for each area and my recommendation to this board is to award the highlighted or the lowest cost for each area for all 18 of these items And all 18 is a separate quote. It's not, you know, as you can see in this paper, one has one out of the 18, another one has the most, I guess, would be eight out of the 18 and in between. But all four contractors did have at least one low quote out of the 18. And, and you're comfortable and feel qualified to... <clears throat> For all the highlighted areas? Um, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with three of the contractors, but the fourth one has been pre-qualified. Um, see no reason not to go ahead and award those low low prices also. Anything on the board? Entertain a motion. I would so move the accept. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? And let's just for the record, we do not have to read these aloud since they were read. No, wait, we did it when we opened them <coughs> on 217. Correct. Okay, Mike, at the 2015 Streetlight Flower Basket. Okay, I believe Jackie has received some bids on those that need to be <coughs> opened and read aloud. Yes. I have two of those. One is from, <coughs> excuse me, one is from. Um, Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Um, the lump sum amount is $12,810. And um, the other one from McCabe's is Seven thousand two hundred dollars. Those are the lump sums. Okay, Your Honor. Since these were lump sum quotes, I would ask that the board consider awarding the low dollar amount pending final staff review of the entire <coughs> document. With a notice to proceed. Yes. Yes, if if I could, please. Board's pleasure. 
Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Caves. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Leslie Votaw, Greendale and Aurora for Spillman. Actually, it, um, it is an interlocal between uh, County of Dearborn and the cities of Aurora, Greendale, and Lawrenceburg concerning the Spillman Technologies uh, contract for services. Uh, in, in talking with Dearborn County, uh, the Dearborn County has taken the lead on this. Um, they have uh, agreed to pay the total amount of the contract price of $797,604 and each of the entities Aurora, Greendale, and Lawrenceburg will reimburse our share. Uh, the City of Lawrenceburg does include both uh, the Lawrenceburg Fire Department and the Lawrenceburg Police Department. <coughs> um, this was also, uh, there's already been basically a committee or, or there's been many joint meetings between um, the sheriff and the chiefs of the police departments and the mayors. Um, so the the joint board is basically those people, uh, plus the board, uh, a member of the board of the commissioners. Um, if you remember, this was um, I did bring it in front of you all. Uh, I do know the interlocal has to be passed by council, but I wanted to kind of keep you guys in the loop since it is. Um, you know, um, services for Border Works um, jurisdiction. Um, but I just wanted to see if you had any questions or comments on. Uh, if, if you remember, the City Council did lock in the price at the end of the year as long as we signed it. Um, the City of Lawrenceburg was the one that actually did that, and um, they have changed the host agency to um, the county, uh, which makes sense because. We're the biggest one, so. Um, but it's really kind of just for your information. I don't have a resolution for council today because uh, uh, we are doing an additional appropriation request to on March 17th. Is that correct, Jackie? Um, yes, this is on that spell one. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll bring it back to council at that time. I did go ahead and put it on council's. Um, but just for your review, this was just given to me last week, so I wanted to put in your packets. But it's pretty straightforward. So, so at that time, we would just send it on to council with a favorable, if that would be the thought. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then also, the only other thing is there will be a <coughs> license, purchase and license agreement with Spillman that will be brought to you all, um, and that will be approved by the Board of Works. That's all I had on that. Okay. Um, the other one is the 911 committee. Uh, we did meet today at 5:30. The 911 <coughs> committee, consisting of Johnny Tremaine, Mike Laning, and Bobby Mills, uh, figured the mayor had appointed them because they're the ones that deal with 911. Um, there was some stuff I passed out to you, uh, Mr. McHenry, from the, and. Um, Jared Teeny from uh, the 911 dispatch, has been there for years, brought this information. Um, and we're just asking that, uh, well, if you want to, if one of you guys want to speak up, but the recommendation from the committee was to, after reviewing everything, um, was to uh, recommend that, that we enter into the interlocal to pay the $60,000 to. Um, Dearborn County for uh, the services. Uh, one of the things that was important, I think, to Johnny, uh, you had uh, the concern was we wanted to make sure that Dearborn County was paying a portion of it. Sure. <coughs> and I believe they are. If you look at the bar, uh, the pie graph that has all, the, it says proposed 2014 Dearborn County 911 funding. Um, the county already pays approximately 28% of it, and um, they're only asking that we pay five. So this would be in, in the also in coach in the term of interlocal agreement, and um, I did attach a copy of that that I had.
previously um, that obviously will go in front of council but this is also your province so I wanted to see if you had any recommendations this is what we've been talking about for the last few months mm -hmm. <coughs> Main board. Ten motion pass on the council favor. I'd so move. Second. All favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. So. Okay. Review and discuss claims board approval. So move. Second. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Utility board in five minutes. Um, you know, you need to ask Mike about that because he has to do that. I thought that oh, there's if you wanted to be out front, there wasn't. I don't know. Go give them the, they all go to Clark, right? But no, but some of them go. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, mean, <laughs> I was just going to take it back to work tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know. Okay, and also, obviously, we have. The Barrett Ball would be the one I could think of. See, that's the thing is, um, I've had several people because I told them, you know, I'm planning on joining Team One, and they're like, you know, 
I'll just give you money. Well, if, if that's the case, then I can just bring the money and say, hey, just to me do it. I didn't know about it. I clicked on it and it went on. Yeah, that's the thing. Matt's by the way. He's been hailing it. He's like, man, I want to sign up, but, but you know, in training, it's intense. Fair, how you doing? Hey, Captain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're halfway through this week. Yeah, we start. They were there for two hours. Dr. Tilly Board Meeting Order. Roll call, please. You know what? Jane Pope. Present. Aaron Cook. Here. Bill Bruner. Here. Mike Lawrence. Here. Tara Holcraft. Here. Attorney Leslie Votal. Here. Utility Director Olin Clausen is not here. Um, Mayor Dennis Carr. Here. And myself. Any announcements? Here and I approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, committee reports. No one's not here. New business, have none. Old business. That's the Votal Equipment Service Agreement, Bridgeway. This is what he brought to you on February 17th. Um, he did talk with, um, I believe this is a, um, is, it's basically a service contract for the th six emergency generators at various city owned and operations <coughs> system basically essential part of that ownership and our ongoing maintenance needs related to that equipment. The contract is for a period of three years and we do have the option to opt out at any point without penalty in year two or year three. Uh, we did add the subject to appropriation language in there and uh, deemed to be entered and construed in accordance with the laws of the state of Indiana. So I don't have any further, um, I would, I would legal review reviewed by, I, I reviewed it and I those were the only concerns that I had. So I told Mr. Clausen that I would bring this back in front of you for approval. Anything on the board? I have one question for Leslie. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject to appropriation, instead of being under payment terms, shouldn't it be under the agreement terms for the automatic renewal? because it would only, it could only renew subject to appropriation. Right, let's see here. Uh, I'm just trying to think of how, where to put it in as far as the language, but yeah, well, I'll work on it. Um, I can make sure that the subject to appropriation is in the correct place, but I thought in our payment terms because that's actually the appropriation, so. But if you'd rather put it under the agreement term, that's fine too. We'll make a motion to add that to it. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept with the addition of subject to appropriation under agreement term. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Seven. Okay, review and discuss claims board approval. So move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion adjourned. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Oh, okay. I was still on the other meeting. Um, Jane Pope. Present. Aaron Cook. Here. Bill Bruner. Here. Mike Lawrence. Here. J.R. Holcraft. Here. Assistant Police Chief Mike Lanning. Here. Fire Chief John Tremaine. Here. 
EMS Director Bobby Mills. Here. Attorney Leslie Votaw. Here. Um, Utility Director Owen Clawson is absent. Let's see, what time is it? 12 after. Um, Mayor Dennis Carr. Here. And myself. Any announcements? Yeah, I have one. Um, I contacted the city on behalf of the uh, Adult Center to pick up the two Fall Fest refrigerators down there. And I was wondering um, if the, when they pick them up, if the two Little League concession stands can borrow them, except for when they're needed by the Fall Fest committee. Because right now they're just using coolers all summer. Here, I'll bring it up from the board. Okay. I don't think they have any problem. Okay. Okay. Approved minutes the previous meeting. So move. Well, I have one thing. Okay. Um, on page four of council. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me find my minutes. Okay. This is February because we have two sets in here. One is actually it says February second, but that should be February twenty third. And then there's one from the seventeenth. I assume we're doing the seventeenth now. Oh. Okay. Is that okay? On page four, just since there's not a DVD to that meeting. Um, I'd ask a uh, city attorney for a written legal opinion, which she had refused because she said I would disperse it to everyone. I would just like to see to it that that's in the me minute meetings. You want that, that to be added to the minutes? Yes. Okay. For the February 17th min minutes? Mike? Yeah. Okay. What's the board's pleasure with that addition? Um, I also had one on um, the Hollywood tax abatement. Um, it says Leslie Fields Council should make a recommendation to redevelopment, and that actually should be the other way around, that redevelopment should make a recommendation to <coughs> council. So, and that's also on page four, Jackie. Okay. Any more? Entertain a motion with the additions. I make... I make the motion to add Mike Lawrence's statement to the minutes and Leslie's correction. Mm -hmm. Got a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Ayes have it. Committee reports. I'm sorry, Mayor. You also asked that they can uh, approve February 23rd's uh, special meeting council. Okay. Approval. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Okay, now we'll go to committee reports. Thank you. Streets Island Curves, Aaron Cook. Um, no report, Mayor. <coughs> Finance, Carol Holcraft. No report, Mayor. Fire Department, Bill Bill Bruner. No report. Police Department. No report, Mayor. Fire Chief, John Tremaine. Uh, nothing other than everybody should have a copy for the rounds in February. EMS Director Bobby Mills. No report. Building Department Carl Freiman. No report, Mayor. Okay. New business. Christy Cook, Orangeburg High School, after prom donation. Hello everyone, I'm Christy Cook, this is Angela Smith. I'm junior representative of Lawrenceburg High School's AFRA Prom, <coughs> and she's the senior representative of the AFRA Prom. I'm going to let Angela speak to you because I've never done this before and she's <coughs> done this, so if you don't mind. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to come here and um, present our, at least our request. Uh, on May 9th, 2015, we'll have the AFRA Prom immediately following the prom for Lawrenceburg High School. And this year will be the first year that we're going to have the after prom outside of the high school. So we have added expenses. It's going to be held immediately following the prom at the Lawrenceburg Convention Center. Um, we anticipate we'll get more students there. We have additional cost, but we believe uh, working and having the prom immediate, the after prom immediately following the prom will encourage more students to participate. Last year, through your generous donations, we had a successful after prom. We had 258 students, I think, attended. So we've been fortunate. We've been increasing our attendance each year. And studies have shown that students that go to these types of events after the prom 
do not engage in the risky behavior and substance abuse and and they're not out in the street driving um, this will be the first year like I said that that we have both of the prom and the after prom outside of the high school we will have some cost savings that's mostly for the prom students there won't be the expense of the bus transporting them so the the walkthrough that's been traditionally at the high school will also be at the event center um, we do anticipate an increase in the cost we've uh, we're gonna have to purchase our food instead of having it at the high school for the after prom will be through the catering services at the event center so we know that our food cost at least are going to triple that's what we're expecting anybody have any questions <laughs> how much is the total cost well right now we're at fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars for after prom for after prom and um, you know we have some some leeway with the cost but that's based on our estimates to date and having similar what we had last year could you tell me what total cost was last year last year was fourteen thousand two hundred and something I'm sorry I don't Did you say the cost was fifteen six fifty yes anticipated that's what we anticipate this year <coughs> uh, we have added cost we're splitting some of the cost with the prom committee um, trying to keep the cost down because the, the prom tickets are what's expensive for the students they're about fifty dollars I think they might be more this year but how much to 60 yeah so what we do is we charge five dollars and we give that back to the students through you know uh, subway gift cards they also get a t-shirt and we try to give them some kind of memorabilia something small to take but the primary uh, <coughs> enticement that we use we have some large door prizes last year we gave I think six six laptops and um, a few of the things that the seniors might use like refrigerator dorm dorms for the refrigerator refrigerators for their dorm sorry board have any questions and you did get three thousand from the foundation no we we haven't gotten that yet you you plan on it is that we requested five thousand that's what we've done the last three years and we've gotten three thousand so we did get an AEP uh, grant that was for five thousand do you remember how much you got from the city last year we got six thousand and that's what you gave us a year before too I make a motion to give the Lawrenceburg High School after prom a donation of six thousand dollars from city marketing Jane um, when Kelly will was at Board of Works two weeks ago um, they approved her using up to so much money there is no money left or there will not be any money left in city marketing after the right. stuff that you've given out and then her three things that she's working with are you talking about that 89,000 for those three items from last meeting um, yeah that's that's taken out yeah well, how much is in it. there um, whatever was in there it's gonna be all gone when she uses when she does the branding and the marketing and, and the other thing you've already contracted them people her. Right. Yeah. In fact, after they gave the thousand dollars two weeks ago to the Durban Bowl, it's gonna the money's it's gonna be short of the money that you were Mortal Works told you you could spend. So there's there's no more marketing budget for the rest of the year then? No. 
unless it's she, she uses it out she, of those three things. She said she may go up to sixty thousand, maybe less. Well, so she may have the funds available. She's not gonna know until she does the work. Yeah. Does the work. So. Find it somewhere else. Find it somewhere else. I didn't. I haven't looked. Where's your money tree? In my office, and it's not been watered for months. <laughs> so it's not producing much. <laughs> What's left in the mayor's and council? Can we divide it three and three? The mayor's used. Oh, no, the mayor. I don't know probably what's left in yours. Probably half mine. I could probably give a thousand out of mine. Mine's pretty well gone. Um, I'd give a thousand out of mine. I don't know council what's left in county donations. I really didn't look today. How much we got left in council? I don't think you took that much out of them. Um, According to yeah, this, yeah. as of, well, it's dated 225 for January. Mayor, you, st you still have 5,000 in promotional, according to this. I think we've already given some out. Yeah. Let's count. Council's in. Uh, 280, I believe, Mike. I might be wrong, but I want to say 280. <clears throat> Are the kids excited about going to the Vent Center? I'm sorry. Are the kids excited about having a ten in center? the council? Yeah, they are. They won't have to ride the bus. Out of mine, there's about really thirty-five hundred. Have everything for, together. I do Connie's thing and a couple other things. Out what of is it. city marketing? What fund? Uh, the other one should be two eighty-four. City marketing should it, be. It says uh, there's hundred twenty-four thousand. There's money there, but if you take what she had approved two weeks ago, Aaron what, says there's hundred twenty-four thousand. We're not going to have enough money. Page page eighteen, Mike. Yeah, because it shows 124. That was 89. Is that right? Last, Last week, 89.5. I stand with my motion 6,000 from City Marketing. Wait, wait a second, Jane. Jane. Kelly, you know what you got left? <coughs> Right. Mm -hmm. So that has not been deducted from. So by that, that'd be like 4,300 left. That's some payments to make. So there's additional funds encumbered on the website. I'll go 1,000 on mine if council go out of theirs. Would you say we had motion floor though? Huh? Would you say we had? <coughs> it says ten thousand. Motion floor. Mm -hmm. I rescind my motion. My new motion is one thousand dollars from the mayor's fund, five thousand dollars from city council for the Lawrenceburg High School after prom donation. Motion on the floor to hear a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Have a good time, prom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Want to go? I didn't go to mine. <laughs> okay. Tom Palmer, Downtown oh. Partnership Committee, oh. late signing program. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, tonight, what we what we brought forward and put in your packet was kind of our second step of what the committee, the Downtown uh, <coughs> Partnership Committee, has been working on. This is the um, sign grant the blade sign grant to try and add <coughs> some of the character that i know Hyatt palma spoke about <coughs> when they came in did the presentation um kind of wanted to die is really just a little bit of feedback and let you know where we were and where our intentions are going forward Does everybody have a chance to review it <coughs> what we're expecting to do is next week uh go in front of the re redevelopment committee and ask for a, a grant of 25000 to be appropriated for the grant program. We've done talk to, we have at least four businesses that will take advantage of it right away. Uh, and we 
we think it's a good step forward to start you know, driving some of that character we're looking for downtown. Who's going to distribute the money? It will be distributed through redevelopment if they approve. I believe he's asking for each individual sign, you'll come back to redevelopment, or will you get the money, then you'll just disperse it? Our intentions are to ask for a one-time approval to where after someone comes in, they go through our process. First, they have to go through Mike and the sign, make sure that it fits within the city standards. But if they come, come to us with the application and it's approved by our committee to where it falls inside the guidelines we set forth in your packet is for them just to after we receive the sign of approval redevelopment will di disperse the funds after everything's in place for each individual sign correct so yeah there would be like a, a claim that would come back in front of basically have to be like a claim process correct okay i got a question on you know i reviewed everything that you had in the packet mm -hmm. um you look at number four under application process it says submit cost estimates for proposed sign bids must be provided if the work is being done by a contractor but then if you go down to number eight under conditions of approval all work shall be performed by insured contractor that so kind of to me it contradicts itself you're correct it basically states it twice well, one saying if the work is done by a contractor, mm -hmm. but number eight saying it must be done by a contractor. Well, that's a submittal process where they submit the cost estimates for the proposed sign, and then for us to approve, it has to be done by a contractor. Will be we don't want to pay somebody for putting up their own sign by any means, right. and it's and it is a grant program. It's, it's it going to be a matching program. It will be a, a contractor Correct. that's injured to do it. Okay. Correct. Maybe we can put some clarification there. And kind of spell it out. That would be. I see what he's saying. Um, okay. Again, there's a draft. Mm -hmm. We're still working on a clawback. Our intentions is to put something in place to where if a business owner receives a grant from us, if they're not in that, if they're not occupying and running their business after 12 months or any time before the 12 month period, they will repay the funds. We are working with Leslie to put something together. Okay. Maybe back under, you know, talking about payments, mm -hmm. again, it talks about only materials being reimbursed if projects do not use a contractor. Where yet? Um, next to the last page, up at the top. And at the beginning of that first paragraph, if a contractor is used, I just want to verify that an insured contractor will be used. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea too. That an insured contractor be the one that actually put it in. But what you're trying to get at is that if if uh, they want to design their own sign, then they'll be allowed to. Correct. All right, we can we can. Because we want them to put their own character in their signs. Right. Maybe we've already received um, one proposal. It's a full picture showing it right in place. Uh, and I believe that was done by Marty. Uh, so also hopefully try and create some business for our sign companies also. The reason we funded, we want to fund the bracket 100% is the committee wants to own that bracket. You want, if something changes, businesses move, somebody can hang a new sign on that bracket. Is there going to be something they have to sign that if they leave within a certain period of time that they're going to have to reimburse that's what we're working on and what will that period of time be we're looking at 12 months <coughs> and it's a matching grant it's not just giving somebody money right. they have to have scanning again I think it was 2500 mm -hmm. up to 2500 well, uh, make some notes as far as the contractor and the fallback Who did this? Hmm? Who prepared this? Uh, it was a joint venture. Okay. Uh, if you have a 
you have a doc for them, that would be great. Yeah, we can get you a copy. Suggestions. Okay. But now, a again, it's been you know uh, two months since I've been <coughs> here, but <coughs> since the last time, I just wanted to give an update. Uh, any, you know, obviously it's the committee of the of the city. Is there any questions where we're at, how, what we're trying to look for, kind of what you're hearing on the street or anything? We could give an update on, a, we did a, expanding our economic development area that has already been in place, um, put in place back in 2010 when the event center was being um, visualized and um, con the concept of it. Um, and uh, we are working to expand the current economic development area um, to include the proposed mapping that Mike brought to you all for the downtown entertainment district which was um, uh, which is being spearheaded by the downtown partnership committee and uh, we should I think er when everything is said and done we should be done by the end of April on that so the second council meeting mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Do we need a motion to send it to redevelopment with favorable or? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. Can't. Sure. I'd like to make a motion to send it to redevelopment with a favorable. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. it. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie Stutz, Durham Community Foundation. <coughs> um, the Lawrenceburg Community Grant Program Phase One, um, which, if I remember rightly, is under grants under $100,000. I think they have two of them tonight. The first one is. Um, I think it says up to $5,000. Is I it up to? Says up to $5,000. Okay, I didn't read Sorry. that far. Sorry. Um, the first one is lifetime resources. <coughs> they want matching funds for replacement catch a ride vehicle. They're requesting five thousand dollars, and um, the recommendation is five thousand dollars for matching funds to replace this vehicle. Um, this vehicle will provide services primarily in Lawrenceburg and Dearborn County. <coughs> in 2014, catch a ride completed over 24,000 trips for 777 individual Deering County residents. Sports pleasure. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, the, the next one is the Deering County 4-H Clubs Association. They want hand wash stations and stage rental. They're asking for uh, um, three thousand six hundred thirty-one dollars for two hand wash stations and stage rental for the Dearborn County Community and 4-H Fair, and the recommendation is to give them the three thousand six hundred thirty-one dollars. Entertain the board. Entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Just need to sign that, Mayor. Or do you sign it? I sign it. Okay. No. Okay. I'll sign mine. Okay. And yeah. tomorrow and I'll send it to him. Nope. Okay. Yeah, we don't let him sign anything, Leslie. That's good. <laughs> sign it up all day long. I know. Old business, Jackie Stutz, Ordinance 1, 215, <clears throat> Alley Vacation, Proximo. Okay. Um... And I just want—I wanted to apologize to everyone on this. Uh, we could have gotten this passed last time. Um, the the motion to suspend the rules. This has to be by a majority. Um, with everything going on at the last meeting, um, a little frazzled. So anyway, we are here for the third reading of Ordinance One, Two Thousand Fifteen, and you can suspend the rules to do so. I make a motion to suspend. So that's. Let me find my um, reading. third reading. Third. Mm -hmm. Let me find my ordinance. Here we go. Excuse me. Um, it's Ordinance 1, 2015, an ordinance to vacate a portion of Shipping Street 
and part of an alley for Proximo Distillers of Indiana and for the repeal of any zoning maps in conflict herewith. Motion suspended rules, read ordinance number one, 2015, but title only, third and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's it. it. We only needed one. <laughs> okay. Uh, ordinance 2, 2015 Utility Rates Amendment. This is second reading, right? Yeah. Do you have that, that ordinance, Leslie? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, this is... Oh, I need to go ahead and do the motion for the second reading. Okay. Motion spend the rules. Read ordinance number 2, but title only for the second time. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Who did the, excuse me, who did the second? I did. Bill, okay. Well, you guys talk so soft down there. I have trouble. Okay. Uh, ordinance 2, 2015 amendment to Ordinance Title 5 to amend Chapter 50, Chapter 52, and Chapter 53, the Lawrenceburg Code of Ordinances. Most approved Ordinance 2, 2015 with second reading. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Jane? Yes. Aaron? No. Bill Bill? Yes. Mike? Yes. JR? Yes. Okay. It's Motion. one, two, three, four to one. Okay. Motion to spend the rules. Read orders number two, 2015, but time only for third and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Amendment to Ordinance Title 5 to amend Chapter 50, Chapter 52, and Chapter 53 of the Lawrenceburg Code of Ordinances. Motion approved. Ordinance Number 2, 2015, with third and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. <coughs> Jane? Yes. Okay, Aaron? No. Bill Bill? Yes. Mike? Yes. And JR. Yeah. Okay, it passed. <coughs> mm. And mm. right there. <coughs> Jackie, I'll just give you the original. You can sign it later. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, Jane Pope. Uh, you have several one here? Yes. Um, when I was reviewing the accounts payable register um, last meeting, I noticed that um, we had four NR non-revolving accounts moved. Uh, one was the annex utility improvement. They moved the NR funds to another NR fund, which is 288. And under Ordinance 26 to 13, I'll read the list first, and then I'll go back. And NR Parks Maintenance was moved to NR Funds to Fund 279, which is another non-reverting fund. And that's set up with Ordinance 3, 2010. We had an NR redevelopment projects moved to an NR funds to to another NR fund 291. And that was set up by ordinance 29 2013. NR building monument maintenance was moved to NR funds to another NR fund 271. Ordinance 4 2010. First of all, I would like to know who had. Who gave permission for these funds to be moved from the original non-reverting funds to be moved in to the other non-reverting funds? Mr. Hedden's here to address all of that. Uh, I just want that question answered first. Yeah, Dan Hedden with Umball. Uh, the council did when you approved the budget. No, we didn't. In the budget. <laughs> Um, can I ask something, Dan? Is that the ones that I said, you know, if you approve this budget, they can spend them? No, this, well, let me, 
let me see if I want to frame what I believe is the is the question here uh, but I believe that my my answer is going to come back to what I've already said which is the council uh, approved it uh, I believe what you observed was the transfer of round dollar amounts five hundred thousand dollars out of the building as a monuments non-reverting account in the riverboat fund to the buildings and monuments non-reverting fund that was approved as part of your budget now keep in mind what a non-reverting fund is it is a separate fund of the city with a self-balancing set of accounts meaning it has its own revenue accounts and it has its own spending accounts and the way that you fund that is you identify revenues or dollars in your riverboat funds and say that you want to transfer those dollars from the riverboat fund to the non-reverting fund. Once it's in the non-reverting fund, it's subject to all the same budget rules that you have for every other fund. So last year, during the budget process, in addition to approving the transfers of dollars or the dollars to your savings or to your non-reverting funds, you also went through a process to identify how you plan to spend those dollars. And I brought all that with me that we can review if you'd like, but I believe what you saw is that when the council adopted the budget, you adopted the authority to transfer $100,000 from the riverboat fund to the non-reverting utility annex fund. That's one of the ordinances that you brought up. You also agreed to transfer $700,000 from the non-reverting redevelopment line in the riverboat fund to the non-reverting redevelopment fund. On here it has 69. 69. Was transferred. I don't know what number you're looking at. The one you just just said. Redevelopment projects move in our funds to fund 291. Yeah, the budget was 700,000. The and budget was, transfer was 700,000. Well, on here the transfer is 69,000. Or is it 690,000? 699031. That would be because they they had spent Let me back up also a little bit further. Historically, and keep in mind where the city is. You've gone from um, budgeting your riverboat and MDF funds all by themselves very late in the year and adopting budgets that really had no matching between revenues and spending to now you've adopted in 2000, for 2015, you've adopted a, a, a balanced budget. And, but historically what had happened was you've always had this plan and, and I think all of you at different times have, have expressed to me your desire to make sure that you're preserving flexibility for the future. So you've always had this plan, even preceding me with these non-reverting funds, you've, you've had non-reverting lines in your riverboat and MDF fund. Well, but historically, you never actually moved the money to the non-reverting funds. You just paid the bills for that right out of riverboat and MDF. And that's what you saw a little bit of with the 699,000 number that you saw earlier is that they had spent a little bit of that out of the riverboat fund directly and we said no uh, working with jackie's office said no that those dollars have to be transferred to the non-reverting fund before they can be spent so in your in your budget for your had all this set aside. Aha. In your budget, for example, for your park non-reverting fund, you've adopted a $137,500 budget, and that's allocated to about 15 different spending accounts. That's fund 211 in your appropriation report. Your non-reverting planning fund, fund 450, you've adopted a $65,000 budget, and you should see that in your appropriation report. And then there's four more examples of this. But Jane, I think what you're seeing is the clerk treasurer's office executing the council's approved plan to transfer those dollars from the riverboat fund into those non-reverting funds where they will stay until they are spent. Well, they're spending them. Well, as I said, you've approved uh, some 
some small some budgets in those non-reverting funds. Uh, for example, in your parks non-reverting fund, you have line items for summer T-shirts. So I don't know if any of that's been spent yet to date. Pool supplies, that flags, flower contract, mm -hmm. uh, sales tax, special events, retirement activities, city outings. All these are paid for out of the park non-reverting fund. And I can give another example. Um, the, I'm just gonna, the redevelopment non-reverting fund has a budget in there for consultants, for travel and education, and for capital improvements. But each one of those, those budgets, uh, the spending and activity against those budgets would, would still be subject to uh, coming in front of, of council for approval. Well, so you, you approve claims. That was my understanding that when we put this money in these non-reverting funds, they were put back as a savings account not to be spent. You're saying within the budget we had line items that we were supposed to move money from Riverboat to put in line items where it could be spent? I think what you just described is exactly your intention. To, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I don't remember Your intention that. is to put money into non-reverting savings funds. Correct. correct. Okay. That was our intention. The, the way to do that is the money's got to come from somewhere. So the money comes from your riverboat fund. Correct. Okay. So the way that that happens is in your riverboat fund, you adopt a, an amount that you intend to transfer to your non-reverting funds. And that's what you've done. And I explained that uh, earlier. You adopted $100,000 for the annexation non-reverting fund, $500,000 for the building monument, $500 for parks maintenance, $700,000 for redevelopment, uh, and $3.5 million for 10 County. So what you have done now, since that, as soon as that budget was approved, and as soon as you got the budget order back from the state, then you can physically move those dollars from the Riverboat Fund to those non-reverting funds. So that's what you saw on those sheets, those, those large dollar amounts. That's moving the money to the savings accounts in basic Okay, terms. moving the money to the savings account, okay. Mm -hmm. And all these ordina ordinances concerning all these non-reverting funds, these funds shall be spent when necessary with the approval of city council. Mm -hmm not spend and then us approve the vouchers you have to ask <coughs> us before you spend and that's my I, you I understand now what you're saying about moving it but I'll read it one more time and if anybody else reads anything into it other than what I'm reading into it it says these funds shall be spent spent when necessary with the approval of council not spend before Okay. and us approve them on vouchers which this uh accounts payable register i got in front of me there are so many out of all these funds that you're spending money out of that you didn't come to us to I'm ask us is if i'm uh, not you okay. whoever's spending it <laughs> didn't come to us to ask us if you could spend it and there's one two three four five six seven eight nine non-reverting funds and uh, it took me quite a while to go through here. Uh, just well, that's not even the right paper there. It's over here uh, to see that you were taking money and you were taking tons of money out of 271 building monuments and maintenance without our approval. Let me let me talk to that a minute because I would argue that there there is approval, and the approval is the budget process. When you went through the budget process last fall. Every one of your non-reverting funds was discussed. I sat right over there and kept notes. In your accounting system, if you look at Fund 271, the Building, building and Monument Maintenance Non-Reverting Fund, there is a budget in there. The budget that the council approved is you approved uh, line item 271. 500 240 for equipment and materials up to $75,000. You approve professional services up to $25,000. Repairs and maintenance up to $50,000. And other capital outlays up to $75,000. Okay. 
And the reason that you did that is because there are some things that happen in that fund that are routine in nature, just like what happens in the general fund or the MVH fund or the park fund. Um, supply costs, supply costs come in, the, there's authority in the budget to spend them, so your departments will act under that authority, bring the claims to you for approval. If there's an issue with the claim, you've reviewed the claim docket, if there's an issue with the claim, you can flag it and hold it, and then you can have further discussions either with your, the department head or even with the vendor if there's a question about the adequacy of the supporting documentation for the payment. So you have given limited flexibility in these non-reverting funds for them to carry out basic operations. But I think the intent that you had in the budget season was that if there was something big, you wanted them to come in front of you for an additional appropriation so you could talk about it. So for example, let's use the, the, the park um, uh, monument maintenance fund. I'm out of my depth here, but let's say that there's a really big problem that needs to be fixed and it's going to cost $150,000. Right now in the budget, there's not enough budget to do that. So your department would have to come in front of council or Board of Works, explain the issue, get the approval that's necessary to do the additional appropriation to make that spending. So what's been approved is the basics. And I think we look back over a few years to see you know, what the spending had been. And I can remember having discussions about you know, what those dollars needed to be. And in fact, in this particular fund, the original proposed budget was 450000 and council cut it to 225000 So I think you've, going, uh, reading directly from the ordinance, it says that um, these funds shall be spent when necessary with the approval of city council. I would argue that your budget process defines necessary items and your claim review and the limits that you put on the budget itself give council the opportunity to participate in any changes that happen and as you review claims you're going through that approval process so if your if your intention is that you want the department to come in ahead of time to get approval to pay the light bill well that's a that's different you don't do that in any other funds I mean, those are the those are the routine things what, that you're trying to capture what that you're seeing I on that sheet. Understood. The way I understood it, I could be wrong. I could have understood it completely wrong. The money that we put in our in our funds was to be saved. I assumed that they have budgeted enough in each and each and every one of these um, budgets, like parks, buildings, monuments, redevelopment. They had already budgeted money in there that would not be taken from NR that was already there to be spent. NR was supposed to be a reserve. I think you could have that discussion locally if you want to about do you want the NRs to be truly an emergency rainy day type situation? Yes, that's or what do you we, want it to I be operating? Any, does anybody else here understand? When I did this, I understood it would be a savings account. A reserve. But Jane, at budget time, I did. I said, if this budget is passed, all the non-reverting funds that had ever dollar amounts that could be spent could be spent because you're approving the budget. That you was know, just so you're up to that line. Either. Yeah, it's the authority right. to spend. Right. It's not the obligation. Anything to spend. above and beyond that is in the savings. But whatever those line items showed when that budget was passed by who passed it on ever who voted yes I said they had the authority to spend up to that dollar amount on those non-reverting line items <coughs> and to protect that I remember you cut, yeah and to protect that you, you cut it right over there yeah so there is a max that they can yeah there, there's only so much approved authority to spend out of these non-reverting funds right now and it's not the entire balance so if you look at the balance in the uh, now my information can be a little dated because I just pulled down the December fund report but the balance, just to give you an illustration, the balance in the building monument maintenance fund is six point six million dollars. That's the, the cash. balance I got as of two twenty six was seven million. Well, it's probably so we've been spending. It, 
Now, if it was 6.6 .6 million in December and 7 million the other day, I think that's a bigger number. Um, so you, you're but, saying December, I thought you said as of. No, this is December. That, that's all I have available to me. So there's 6.6 .6 million, you're saying now there's over 7 million. The only approved spending on that fund right now is $225,000. Everything else that would be spent out of that fund has got to come in front of the approval body before it can be spent. And that's, that situation is the same with all the other non-reverting funds, although the, the balances are different. Okay, so when we look at the budget next year, we want to make sure we got enough in the line items to support basic operations yeah basic operations without going into our non reverting funds our reserves well yeah I would say that unless an emergency comes up just like you just said yeah I would say that your your budget your budget strategy is to budget out of the non reverting funds those things that you know you're gonna need what, what, whatever they may be and then if there's something above and beyond that it's an additional appropriation process which is what you do with every other fund so it's treating it more, treating those those funds uh, as what they are. They're little, they're little entities. I mean, this entity is created to take care of your buildings and monuments throughout the city. Any other questions? The only thing is with the ordinance, um I mean, it states in every one of them I've got here in front of yeah, me. Yeah, I've got a copy. And you read it yourself. And I guess we approved it when we approved the bu budget process. You're saying we approved it then. You, you approved the budget is the authority to spend. It's not an obligation to spend. It's saying that based on the information we have today, this is what we think we're going to need in 2015. And then your departments execute that plan. And if something changes, they come to you and talk about it. So if something changes, if, if a big project needs to happen at the parks that we, that's unexpected or emergency-based or, or an opportunity comes along, chances are it's going to exceed the budget that's been approved in that fund. So they're going to have to come back and talk about it. Are we looking at, has all the non-reverting funds been transferred to other non-reverting funds? Will I expect to see any more transfers? Yeah, let me, I just want to clarify vocabulary. You're not transferring from a non-reverting fund to a non-reverting fund. That's what it says here. Now, you're, you're moving money from an account, an, ex, an appropriation account in the Riverboat Fund, moving that money Move to... Move NR funds to fund 288, which is an NR fund. NR funds is the, the name of the line item in the budget. But you're not moving, you're moving out of the Riverboat Fund, because you've identified that Riverboat money, that so much of it each year, you're going to capture and move into these non-reverting funds. That's what was done. And I, I'll actually have to ask Jackie if that's complete, because I think it is. It should be. But I, I haven't verified it myself. No, it should be complete. Move past January, I think. <laughs> so, so, 288. <coughs> we, only, we only moved so much of it. Mm-hmm. So 288, we transferred 100,000, like you said. Correct. And we still got a million some. In 284, is it still in the riverboat? 284 is the is the uh, is riverboat fund. is the riverboat fund. Mm -hmm. So we've got annex utility improvement. Mm -hmm. A little over a million dollars still in 284 riverboat considered an NR fund. You lost well, a little me. bit of what I got here, you can look at it. Yeah, if, if you don't mind if I can approach. <coughs> okay, those are the dollars. This is the dollars that were spent out of fund 284 and deposited into the other funds. So if you add those up, um, those are the dollars that just simply got transferred from the fund 284 to the various number of funds. 
Okay. So and then when I dollars went from two eighty four to um, the phone number is for annexation. Okay. And then when I talked to Brittany, Brittany said this was our balances. Yep. After this money after was the trained, money transferred. Mm -hmm. That's still over here in Riverboat. No, it's in a separate fund. This is fund. Oh my goodness. You moved money from the Riverboat fund right. to the non-reverting fund. In the non-reverting fund, the balance is a million dollars. Where's your, uh, I need one of my pieces of paper, I'll tell you what I'm doing. in there. So everything's out of riverboat into the different line items, the 288, the 279. The, the annexation, non reverting fund is fund 288. Right. So in fund 288, that's the cash balance. So does that mean they can spend that without our approval? No. They only have authority to spend up to four hundred thousand dollars. They cannot. They can only spend what you approved in the budget. I gotta get it. Did I want to type that out or But everything has been transferred for, from Riverboat. Correct. Can you get me a list of um, what can be spent out of all the NR funds? What can be, um, it's in your budget. In your budget. Book. Yeah, you, you already have that. Your non-reverting funds that, that, are, that you're talking about today are Fund 271, Fund 279, Fund 288, and Fund 291. Right. Each one of those has appropriations that have been adopted by council, suggested, introduced by the mayor, adjusted by council, adopted by council, and are now on your appropriation report. That's all that's allowed to be spent out of those funds unless you take further action. Hey, Morgan. I, I understand that all the money's been transferred. Yes. So we're only allowed to spend up to a certain amount. Yes. Which was put in the budgeted line items. Yes. My understanding was that nothing could be spent, that it was a savings. I didn't, when it just threw me off when I seen okay. it transferred from one NR to another NR. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. That's the vote Conflict of interest nepotism forms. Thank you for all of you signing the nepotism forms. Those just go to the city executive, to the mayor. Uh, and I will make sure he gets those copies. Um, that is according to the, the statute that we passed in 2011, I believe. No, it was 2012. Um, and then at the end of the last meeting, Mr. Lawrence was, um, he wasn't here, the U Uniform Conflict of Interest Disclosure Statement, his, his needs approved. He has looked over it and approved it, so we just need a motion or to approve his and I'll give them to Jackie and have her get them out to the appropriate parties. Need a motion approve? So move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Let the record show I abstain. Okay. Abstained. Um, the next thing I have is the Green Valley Properties vote. Um, there was a motion to rescind and by the way Mike it is rescind, repeal, or annul. So it was kind of semantics there. Um, but uh, the uh, under the Roberts rules, um, it can't be rescinded. Let me just read it. Any vote taken by us only except those mentioned further on may be rescinded by a majority vote. Can you vote. speak into the mic so we can hear you? <laughs> Any vote taken by an assembly except those mentioned further on may be rescinded by a majority vote, providing notice of the motion has been given at the previous meeting or in the call for this meeting, which means in your agenda, or it may be rescinded without notice by a two-thirds vote, which would be four of you, or by a vote of a majority of the entire membership. That seems to allow it. There is one. There are some exceptions to this. The motion to rescind can be applied to all votes on all main motions, including questions of privilege and orders of the day that have been acted upon, and to the votes on appeal, with the following exceptions. Votes cannot be rescinded after something has been done as a result of that vote that the assembly cannot undo, or 
where it is in the nature of a contract and the other party is informed of the fact, or where a resignation has been acted upon or one has been elected to or expelled from membership of office and was present or has been officially notified. Um, so you guys can do with it what you want. The, that was the only um, caveat that I wanted to, to show on that vote. Um, as far as uh, a motion for reconsideration could have done, could have been done also on that, um, and that just makes it s start all over, and there would have been a debate. That probably would have been the best way to do it, but at any rate, um, the, res the rescission, um, because it was done in a special meeting um, and it was not noticed, I would just recommend that you ratify that vote now in the regular meeting, and that's why I put it on the agenda. Mike, I think you made a motion, Alan. So I need to make the same motion. You just need to ratify. Yeah, that that'll be fine. To use the word resend. Yes, resend, repeal, annul is. I'm. I make used. the motion to resend the motion that was passed on February 17th to release the first mortgage off of 311 Walnut Street. I believe. Yes. Can be discussion. Green Valley uh, Properties. For Green Valley Properties. You have a second? It is three eleven any discussion. Okay. Yeah, see if there's any discussion. Any discussion? Did we get a second? Wait a minute, did we get a discussion? Okay. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. Just a second. Jane? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Bill Bill? No. Mike? Yes. JR, yeah, JR. No. Okay. It's three to two. Okay. Thank you. Resolutions, Lewis and Caps, Senator Local. Resolution yeah. number one, 2015, is the resolution to enter into the interlocal agreement. The interlocal agreement's been presented to um, the Board of Works. <coughs> they have uh, passed it on with a favorable recommendation. So if you're ready, I'll uh, proceed with the resolution one number number one, 2015. Can I say one thing? I'm still a little concerned that we got two two lobbyists. I mean, I, I don't understand the purpose of spending money. I mean, last year we discussed that it was going to do it for one year, and now we're going on, right. and I don't understand us. I mean, to me, we're throwing money away in one of the two places. I agree. Well, it could, I tell you, this last thing with the state up there on the gaming, they both work great on this thing. Grant, I'll let you speak a little more about it. You've dealt with them. Yeah, in uh, uh, House Bill uh, 1540, uh, on the 19th of February, they proposed the uh, uh, getting rid of the emission tax, uh, the LDA agreement being renegotiated uh, between 2 and 7%. Uh, the hold harmless money was taken out, and they were restructuring the gaming tax. Impact of that would have been roughly about $35 million. Uh, the the proposal uh, this was a hearing that occurred on the morning of the 19th uh, and uh, working on uh, Friday Saturday eventually on Sunday uh, convinced the uh, Speaker of the House to delay the second reading from Monday uh, to the 24th on the 24th there was uh, 24 addendums presented uh, and uh, the both both groups of lobbyists were involved in those addendums and advising on uh, legalities behind those and uh, it was uh, the bill those that portion of those that bill was defeated now the ones that got through was the uh, land base uh, and live table games and they're looking at live table games at 50 percent uh, those are headed to the Senate um, and we'll have to see what happens over there but uh, I'd have to say that uh, we did see a big effort from it and uh, actually uh, we were uh, last Wednesday we were up there and we were thanked for uh, having that uh, assistance available uh, for them in getting that 
uh, overridden. So I would say that uh, it's a valid point, Mike, and, and kind of we inherited that when we switched and we and still got the county. The thing we have to do is we have to watch uh, that if there's an issue that's really the county's issue and there's a city side to it, we just have to uh, back away from Well, that's where the my big side. concern comes in because what happens when something okay. benefits the county doesn't benefit Lawrenceburg and right. now well, and, and that's and exactly what I brought up over, right. over And the thing time. is on the emission tax was a great example. It definitely messed with the county but also messed with us so we were both in there together. Um, the LDA had nothing to do with the county. Yes, it did. Um, there, but, the, uh, the county, the county executive was going to be able to help renegotiate the LDA according to the proposed legislation. What it, what it referred to when we got the clarifications from the author of the bill, mm -hmm. it uh, some of these LDA agreements are with counties, not cities. So they had plural county, and plural and used the plural of cities. Okay. So, um, but I understand. But in this one here, I think. You know, but we're we're into the session, and uh, if you all can see your way to it, uh, my recommendation is to stay with it. Uh, we just have to watch it, back away from it if there's something that comes up. I've talked to both of them, um, and uh, next year we go it alone with one. I definitely think that should be looked at for next year, Mike. They uh, they block. We were possibly going to have to renegotiate revenue sharing. Oh, I don't I that mean, got blocked. I mean, we need as many people helping us up there as we possibly can. But like can. I said, though, the problem comes in if you got one thing that benefits, yeah. you know, the county and not us, and vice versa, and then you got two that you're paying, one that's partnered with the county and the other cities, and it's so something to point, be looked into. But I agree with Grant. We need to hold on to all three of them I to get us through. Two, two, excuse me, two of them. Two, two firms. All two firms. I met two gentlemen and one lady. Yes. But I talked to our representatives at the State House, and they said that our lobbyists helped get this defeated. So they showed them the way to do it. We definitely didn't I mean, need they, it. They did her jobs. They really did. Her name's Jewel, and I've met with her. I met her once. Jewel's out of the picture. It's uh, John Bond. John mm -hmm. Bond now. Did Jewel retire, or she just move on? I think Jewel's uh, I think brought out for special there. occasions. Uh, she's kind of semi-retired. But Bingham is the one that really helped. I mean, they they come after them. And they showed our reps what to do to defeat this bill. And I had the reps tell me this. Uh, it's working. It's working so far. But it's going to the summer session. We don't know what's going to come out of that. And I'm afraid of that, I'm telling you, because I think what they're going to do is repack their guns and come back for next year. But, uh, and not not to belittle it, but uh, you know that land base is an issue. Uh, Hollywood's put out a lot of money to build on the uh, wet side of the levee. That's all done by uh, uh, maritime uh, construction, and so we need to find a way to level that playing field. Still working on that, and then live table games is uh, actually it's an old loophole that they used for video slots that they were able to do this. It was never intended for them to have uh, table games, even in video form. So uh, uh, those two issues are still still impact at least the boat. So we still need to work on those. Maybe what we need to do then is just some type of an agreement with um, Lewis and Kappas to uh, basically a conflict agreement. Um, there's something that we can do. And if they, if they are... Per, are I mean, and the county has to be aware of this too, uh, and the other entities. If if there is a conflict of interest, they they can't represent any of us. They can't just get out for one of us. They ha can't represent any of us. So um, I would recommend that we uh, follow up and um, have them sign something like that. Because the thing is, if to me, I mean, if if we have our own, they have these people. If it benefits both. This firm's still going to fight just as hard whether Lawrenceburg's in it or not. Correct. And, and if we're paying our firm, I, so, I, I mean, I just, I don't see the spending. Yeah. It, was, it was done to, uh, for continuity, and I would say two years is enough continuity, and then we can change it next year. All right. I'll proceed with Leslie, the resolution. Should, should we do a conflict of interest with them? Um, I can I can contact Mr. Bond 
we can provide something and uh, get some language together and have you guys. I think we it doesn't have to be here. done. I don't think with this with the with the interlocal because that's this is just for the payment between all the parties. So, so I, I, I like to see us keep them for at least the rest this year because it's they're going to the summer session. We don't know what's coming out of this thing. Bingham and really did a great job for us. They really did. All the reps told me if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't know what to do with this bill. They didn't understand the whole thing themselves. So it's up to the board what they want to do. Go ahead and proceed with resolution number one, 2015. The board want to do that? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with it for this year. I just think it should be looked at for next year. A resolution regarding entering into an interlocal agreement with the Dearborn County and Dearborn County Convention Visitor and Tourism Commission, the cities of Aurora and Greendale, and the town of Morsell, St. Leon, Dillsborough, and West Harrison, sharing the cost for lobbying services. Whereas Indiana Code Section 36171 authorizes the state of Indiana political subdivisions of state agencies to enter into interlocal cooperation agreements for the joint exercise of powers by resolution or ordinance of a participating governmental entity. And whereas Dearborn County, the Dearborn County Convention Visitor and Tourism Commission, the cities of Aurora and Greendale and the towns of Morsell, St. Leon, Dillsborough, and West Harrison have traditionally employed lobbyists for all entities with Lewis and Capus Governmental Relations Group, which is Lewis and Capus, through such an interlocal. And whereas the city of Lawrenceburg wishes to enter into settle an interlocal agreement with, the Dearborn County, with Dearborn County and Dearborn County Convention Visitor and Tourism Commission, along with the towns of Dillsborough, Morsell, St. Leon, and West Harrison, and the cities of Aurora and Greendale, for the sharing of cost of lobbying efforts of Lewis and Capus, as said, cooperation between the aforesaid political subdivisions will be a benefit to all citizens of Durban County. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Common Council of the City of Lawrenceburg, Durban County, Indiana, as follows. One, the City of Lawrenceburg does hereby authorize and approve the entry by the City of Lawrenceburg, Indiana, into the interlocal agreement presented herewith cons constituting an interlocal cooperation agreement by and among the Indiana participants that are parties thereto, namely Durban County, the Durban County Convention Visitor and Tourism Com Commission. Uh, the towns of Dillsboro, Morsell, St. Leon, and West Harrison, the cities of Aurora and Greendale, to employ Lewis and Capus for lobbying efforts for all entities. This resolution shall become effective upon passage and upon compliance with the procedures required by law. Passed by the Common Council of the City of Lawrenceburg, Deerman County, Indiana, on this second day of March, 2015. Heard the resolution. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I might add to anybody sees Representative Judd McMillan, congratulate him. He fought this thing tooth and nail. He got it stopped. And Randy Fry also helped into it, too. Along with some other ones. I already wrote on mine and signed mine. Okay. Does that make any difference? Nope. Okay. That's fine. Let's get signed on the next page, too. Should I hate you? just need a copy of it. Sure. Okay. And then you have the inner local. Can you just have him sign it later? Or? Uh, wait a minute. Here's the interlocal. I have it. I okay. have to find the interlocal. I have misplaced it. I have it. It's right there. Huh? I have it. Oh, okay. I yeah. had it today earlier, but my day went to hell with all this paperwork. All right. Oh, did you sign the second page of this one? Yes, I did. Okay. Check for sure. Meant. Okay, on this second day of Please March. Please right. At. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lewis and What's the second thing? Oh, here's the interlocal behind it. I got it. Okay. I don't have a notary stamp, but you can do that for me, right? Huh? Notary stamp? Yeah. Okay. I've got one at the office. Okay. Thank okay. you. <sighs> All right. The next thing is research on Robert's rules. Um, One question. We did the resolution. We're not going to do the interlocal? The resolution was to enter into the interlocal. Okay. Um, Mr. Cook had asked me as far as uh, for future reference, um, the right of an assembly to eject anyone from its place of meeting. Um, every deliberate assembly has the right to decide who may be present during its session and when the assembly, either by rule or by a vote, decides that a pers certain person shall not remain in the room, it is the duty of the chairman to enforce the rule of order using whatever force is necessary to eject the party. 
Um, there also is a section on the right of a deliberate assembly to punish its members. A deliberate assembly has an inherent right to make and enforce its own laws and punish an offender. The extreme penalty, however, being expulsion from its own body. When expelled, if the assembly is a permanent society, it has the right for its own protection to give public notice that the person has ceased to be a member of that society. I think they're talking there is to like actually take them off the board completely. Um, but as far as the, uh, it does have to be by a rule, which would be a rule that we have in our ordinances, or by a vote to eject any person from a meeting that doesn't do it voluntarily. So I found out. Okay, you got interlocal agreement with county? Uh, the one for Spillman? Yes. Okay. I don't know what I did with mine. Here, I've got one here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, this was just for your information. Um, I am going to ask that it come back for a vote on uh, the dis uh, March 17th meeting, uh, our next general. I, I just wanted to include it in your packets tonight so you could look it over, see if you had any questions. If you were present during the Board of Works meeting, we explained that the total contract price is going to be paid by the county and then the Aurora, Greendale, and Lawrenceburg are, are going to reimburse. Um, if one thing to point out too that if an entity fails to re or, or if basically um, I don't know if it's in here um, but Mr. Bonadessa was going to work on it he was going to put something in here in fact if, if somebody doesn't pass it then um, one of these entities doesn't pass it then the whole thing is nobody is going to do it it has to be all or none basically so I think it's nice that someone else is willing to pay all the money up front yeah Number seven. so you're not the kind of yeah. That one, yeah. Please. 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 Uh, page two, number seven, is oh. the uh, termination part of. Oh, it does state that then. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I I didn't. The copy that I had forwarded to Connie, I didn't think had that in there. But thank you. I'll look at that then. That's fine. Okay. I have mine somewhere. Okay. Leslie, you know we'll lose these papers between now and the next time you read it. Why can't we just go ahead and do it? Because I don't have the resolution, and we're doing appropriation on the seventeenth. Oh, we have to appropriate money to pay for it? Mm -hmm. We can't find it within the budget anywhere? No, I don't believe I don't so. Know. I mm -hmm. haven't looked. Jackie, can you please do that? I so, can look, yeah. So we don't have to appropriate any what money? What is our share? We did do, um, we went through the process and did the uh, additional preparation. So um, that will, I just figured that it would be good to do everything together. Okay. Because if you don't pass the appropriation, then we can't enter into the interlocal. Correct. How much right. is our share, Leslie? 297000 I believe. But that is for both the Lawrenceburg Fire Department and the Lawrenceburg okay, Police so Department. That's police, fire, is that EMS? Uh, no. No, just 279-161. There you go. Okay. I, I was going to ask another question when you did discuss it with the Board of Works. How come the EMS is not a part of it? That might be something for the EMS, too. There was a post, but I think I mean, uh, their software we were looking should today about the recording software. They'll be part of the recording software. The state of Indiana is, has a new software program that's going to be free for EMS recording. And we're going to look into that. Okay. So Jackie, can you dig and find that money so we don't have to appropriate new money? Yeah. You got to find it somewhere to Did keep it As we're without already going over a balanced deficit. budget. Yep. Yeah, I will look and see. Okay, nine. If some can be taken from different yeah, line items, that's like possible. professional services and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, finally, is this the 911 committee pre previous term meeting tonight? The 911 committee consisting of uh, Fire Chief uh, Johnny Tremaine, Assistant Police Chief uh, Mike Lanning, and LERU Director. Uh, Bobby Mills, uh, their recommendation to you all is to um, to go forward with the interlocal with the county um, to pay the county sixty thousand dollars for providing nine one one services. Um, I did give you uh, a copy of the bar graph and um, information that was provided to us by Jared Teeny, who is the director. 
Um, and also, um, Shay McHenry came and, and brought this stuff to us. Is it 60000 even? 60000 even. Okay. Um, if you look at the, the one that says proposed 2014 Dearborn County 911 funding, the main thing I think that the, the committee wanted to see was to see where what Dearborn County was actually putting into this. Um, and <coughs> their contribution is about $319,627. So, um, and ours, they're only asking us to do, you know, our proportionate share of 5.24% at $60,000. Um, I believe the 911 fund is funded by, which is the 707000 That comes from your phone bill. Phone bill. Um, so to break it all down, um, I mean, I do think, and, and this, the board's recommendation was that uh, that we enter into the interlocal with um with the Dearborn County Communications. I'm sorry, with the with the county. Um, I did also um, when we brought this up. Uh, I'm not even sure when we brought it up. When was it? December maybe. Still has 14 2014 on here. So I'm thinking it was November or December last year. Um, they are no longer asking for uh, a back pay. Originally, the two there were two um, separate interlocals proposed to you. One had a prorated payment for 14, and then uh, the 60,000 for 15. Um, and I did clarify with Mr. Uh, with the commissioner that they're only looking for 2015 at $60,000. So if I could get your approval, I will make Is sure. There money in the budget for that. I'll have to find it somewhere. It's another thing to go looking for. <laughs> there isn't any money appropriated that I know of, not for 911. Can it come from the three so. departments? Please? Can it come from the three departments, fire, police, and EMS? Can you find it? Or wherever else? else you can find it. You guys got any money? <laughs> this don't have anything to do with the EMS dispatcher. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 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 911 has got a lot to do with you, Bobby. <laughs> 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 I don't have any money, I can tell you that. Oh, oh that's clear the money part. We just spoke. Bob don't say much, but what he does, he <laughs> puts it out there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shoot, that was funny. <laughs> All right, shoot. Jackie, will you find that 60000 somewhere? I'll look for that, too. Okay. Well, I will definitely bring that back to you the next meeting. That's all I have there. I've only got one question about this. It says, Dearborn County 911 police call totals for 2014 and the percentages of call and the percentage of police calls for the county for 2014 total 100%, but Greendale's nowhere on this pie chart, so I don't know how that's... Um, I don't know how that works out. Hmm. They have their own dispatch here. Okay. That's that's the reason why they're not on it. Okay. And we looked into that as far as us, just to clarify, we looked into it as far as us trying to do our going back our own dispatch. I know that was one of the questions, and it's like an outrageous cost. Yeah, I was I was adding the totals. It was coming up to 100%. I was like, I don't know how it's coming up to 100 without Greendale on here, so I didn't know. It's, um. it's outrageous. I. I mean, for so if you, equipment, it's, it's if you live in Greendale, you call the city, you don't call 911? Yes, they, yeah, they have their number that they call, but they can call 911 as well, and then they just transfer them back over to, to Greendale. Fire, can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, Officer Lanning? Yes. You guys got over a $2.3 million budget, and you can't find 30000 at least? I can try. Go towards it. I can try and look. Uh, the budget was cut pretty pretty decent this year, so come see me and I'll help you find them. We can do that. I'm <laughs> we can do that. I don't. I mean, I don't have a problem and finding half of it if I can. Hopefully, find it. hopefully the fire can do the same. Uh, we don't believe fires involved with it either. It's oh, just, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's uh, police calls. It's okay. non police non emergency service police service calls. Mm -hmm. So if you can find that, we call nine one one somewhere else. When there's a fire, I'm sorry. I said we call nine one one when there's a well, fire. That's that's what they're saying. Basically, is that the nine one one calls? That's the seven hundred some odd thousand dollars. You're paying for that. But when someone calls dispatch to have the police come do a lockout or uh, check a barking dog complaint, that's where they're saying those calls that they're charging us. <coughs> Okay. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Any comments from the audience? Anyone want to speak? Well, that's good. They want to go home. Like You've been there too long. Everybody wants to go home too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Review, discuss claims, board approval. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion adjourned. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Put our federal ID number. Good boy. I'll hear. I'm worried about our. Um, Bane said you all need to copy one. Uh, Are you in the office tomorrow? Okay. 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 Oh, listen. I know. But I'll tell you what. Brittany's supposed to be a for today. And uh, he went all the way through and I sent him about the uh, attestation form that we have. So uh, she's been to keep track of a lot of things. I like it. That's good. Well, I think listening is good. I think listening is good. So we probably need to find But at least our numbers. <laughs> you got a ride, buddy. There's a little and point there. With the you know, that's Jane, here's your oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's it. We'll have them the next one committee. And with the um, QuickBooks update like that, that's going well, very well. may be correct. But it's just been pounded in my head for so papers. many years. No, I'm talking to him. He knows it. You want those quotes? Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> It's yours, that's mine. That's your copy.